Hey everyone! Hi! Welcome to our Q&A! Thanks for all the questions you've sent. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for us to sit down and read your questions and answer them as best as we can. Yeah. Should I start with the first question? Yeah, I'm not going to do all the work. Okay. <laughs> Toby T. Art asks, It would be nice to hear how you guys got started in the industry and when did using 3D start to become more significant during the course of your careers? Hmm. Okay. Um, as for getting started, um, after I graduated from my master's at Teesside. I was lucky enough that I knew uh, some people working in the industry um, at a company called Blazing Griffin uh, up in uh, here in Scotland. And I knew some of the people working there and I, you know, I was lucky enough to know them and they were kind enough to offer me some work. Just, you know, little bits and pieces um, here and there, stuff that I can get started just to get my feet wet, so to speak. And of course, besides that, I was constantly looking for freelance work, you know, scouring forums and everything, applying to everything. So that's pretty much how I got started. Just very small, very slowly, but then, you know, slowly picking up speed. It was a bit similar because uh, Omar John and I actually studied together or not together. He was a year above me um, at the same university yeah at yeah. the same university um and after i completed my ma i wasn't really sure what to do because like i kind of had this idea like oh i'll i'll like go into a studio i'll like work mm. in the studio or something like that but then the day c came and i had graduated and i was like shit i don't know what to do like i don't feel ready for a studio um I didn't really feel like my skill was quite there yet and I just felt very unsure of myself so mm. what I did was I started looking at freelance work um, same as Omar Jean, but I kind of scoured the web so I was kind of looking at these like freelancing websites um, like Upwork, Freelancer, all those typical websites um, and just trying to kind of find work. It took me a while to kind mm -hmm. of get established. Yeah, that's kind of how we got started pretty much. And when it comes to when did using 3D started to become more significant during the course of your careers, I wouldn't say it necessarily became more significant for me. It kind of depends from like project to project. Some projects I do use it and it kind of helps and, you know, speeds up the process. But obviously the kind of work that I do is a bit more different. Yeah. Um, so it's... Because when you're talking about something like illustration or concept art, it can be so many different things. For some people, you know, 3D might be a really important part of their workflow, a really important, like, core part of how they work. Whereas, like, some other people, not so much, you know, they're just still, like, drawing by hand. And, I mean, there are still people in the industry who do some of their work by hand, you know, with, like, literally doing pencil sketches and scanning them in and then coloring them in Photoshop. It, it really depends on what kind of work you do. Yeah, as for me, like 3D has obviously played a bigger role for me. Uh, I didn't start out with like once I graduated and started doing freelance work. I actually didn't start with 3D until like long after that, like maybe two years into freelancing mm. um, because I didn't really see it as like an necessary tool and I wouldn't say that it's a necessary tool now but it's like it just became such a helpful tool because I was struggling when I was doing 2D artwork it was really difficult for me because I have aphantasia I can't like visualize stuff in my brain so having something as physical as 3D to work with like really mm -hmm. helped me and like really just unlocked my creative potential as cheesy as that sounds over the years it's just become more and more important in my mm. work and yeah. i've like developed my 3d skills as well and obviously with the blender constantly getting better and we like getting new tools like unreal and everything like that human generator thing that unreal is like releasing yeah uh, this year yeah like i'm probably gonna keep using 3d for the rest of my life to be honest yeah Okay, and next question mm -hmm. from Brandon Ark. How did we meet? Also, do you have any plans for paid courses or even a Patreon? Um, like we just mentioned before, we studied at the same university and mm -hmm. that's how we met actually. Um, yeah. We met right as I was about to finish my master's course and Christina was about to finish her BA course, which was in game art and design. Computer games and animation, yeah. I think it was called. So you were about to finish that. Mm -hmm. um, you were finishing that. And yeah. I was finishing the MA in concept art. Mm -hmm. And that's when we met. Um, and then she just would not stop following me around. <laughs> that's not um, true. <laughs> <laughs> so unfair. 
<laughs> Eventually, I caved in. I was like, fine. <laughs> no, we actually met at this like um, it wasn't like a convention. What do you call it? Like um, it was like an exposition event. It was basically Kinda, like yeah. students showcasing their, their own final works. work. Yeah, so mm -hmm. they had like booths set up with like posters and mm -hmm. everything. Um, so we basically just kind of went to each other's booths, uh, just, trashed each other's work. Yes, and then I stalked Omar Jal yeah. until he he mm. gave in. <laughs> Yeah, she's still around. Um, uh, when it comes to paid courses and Patreon, we got some paid tutorials coming out soon-ish. We're still working on them. They're taking up a lot of time. Yeah, I actually have been working on, if you guys remember this Viking illustration that I've like mentioned in previous videos, but it's just been taking so long. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I just got like swamped with client work and then we got contacted by Clip Studio Paints. So we started producing videos for them and it's just like, <laughs> it's just been so much. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got that stuff planned out, mm -hmm. coming out soon-ish. Hopefully, we'll Hopefully, see. Yeah. And for Patreon, Patreon, it's something we talked about before, um, but what we've decided was that we don't want to get started on a Patreon unless we know for sure we can dedicate a good amount of time yeah. into it. So it will be worth it for people who want to join in. You know, I don't want to make a Patreon for the sake of making it. Like I want to make sure that I know I can actually give something back that will be valuable enough for people yeah. you know i don't want to be just like i don't know just set up the patreon and hope that people throw me a few bucks yeah. i want there to be something um substantial yeah just basically when we have more time and we feel like we have the energy to actually provide something yeah. substantial like omar john said, soon like, hopefully hopefully okay. very soon we'll see <laughs> so nishant nixant i don't know how to really pronounce that yeah. maybe you'll have to Sorry. like you'll have to tell Makes me sound, i guess um, but when did you know this was your thing what was your aha moment for me it was a bit weird because i didn't really know what to do after graduating and i started freelancing i kind of wasn't set on like this one art style or this one type of work like character design or vehicle design or whatever i was just like whatever i can get i will take and eventually like through just lots of different client projects i kind of started branching into hmm. cover art and found that to actually be a really good thing for me like i I really enjoyed it and I get to kind of take my time when I'm working on client projects because when I was doing concept art work uh, because I have aphantasia and I'm just not very good with design work like making quick iterations and thumbnails like you usually do like it's just really difficult for me mm -hmm. and I just don't enjoy it as much um, but getting to work on just like this one piece of artwork for like extended period of time I found that to kind of be perfect for me, like the way I work and it was a bit different like when I was younger because I just enjoyed being creative in general. Mm. So it didn't matter if I was doing like film work, if I was drawing, if I was making things out of clay. I even made like claymation <laughs> stuff <laughs> animation and uh, really enjoyed doing that. So it's kind of shifted throughout my entire life. Like I've kind of been enjoying this one thing and I'm super focused on that. And then I move on to the next thing and I'm super focused on that. Mm -hmm. And right now I've kind of landed in like a sweet spot where I get to do a lot of 3D work and I get to do a lot of 2D work and I kind of feel like that's like a perfect medium for me. So yeah. Yeah. How about you? Um, personally for me, I never really had an aha moment, to be honest. Um, it, this was just one of those things that I always did, you know, when I was a kid, I always been interested into just illustration and comics and drawing and stuff like that. That's always been my like what I've been drawn to, you know, like when it comes to reading and consuming that stuff, but also making stuff like that myself. You've always just been a massive nerd. I've basically. always been a, just a massive nerd who was into <laughs> things like that. So I never really had this moment of like, aha, this is what I want to do. But rather I kind of had, I guess, like smaller aha moments of slowly realizing, oh, I can actually make a career out of this. You know, like when you're a kid, you don't really think about stuff like that, obviously. You are not really thinking, oh, how am I going to make a living? How am I going to pay rent or anything like that? You just find something and then you just do it because you like doing it. But I think as I got older, slowly I realized I've, I can't actually make a career out of this stuff. You know, I can do this stuff professionally. So it was never an, quite an aha moment. It was just, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And yeah. it's, I kinda, I had little breaks from it here and there throughout my life. I can't say I stuck to it, you know, consistently, but you know, I always came back around to it. 
How are your like character design work? Like, did you find a specific type of style or anything like that that you like really enjoyed throughout your career? When it comes to creating designs myself, I think always what comes out is my interest, especially like European comics, like stuff that I grew up reading, like French comics, French like uh, Belgian comics, Italian comics, all the styles and the character. Um, designs that I used to see in these comics that that stuff really got into my subconscious when I was growing up and it's it's still there I can still see its effects when I'm drawing and when I'm creating right now and yeah that's like one thing that I always kind of come back around to like comic art especially old school European comics I just love that stuff <laughs> okay next question <laughs> any date <laughs> it's my turn <laughs> God. she's always like this Da Jofe, the Jofe, D A J, yeah, it might be Jofe. Uh, da Jofe, any dating advice specifically for artists? Winky They're face. Asking. Yeah, winky. <laughs> um, yeah, we, this is something we sometimes talk about. Actually, yeah. um, like I don't really wanna go into like proper dating advice, like because I don't Here think I'm ten qualified. Tips you have to follow. I don't think I'm qualified for dating <laughs> advice in any way. But uh, I think like we spoke about this and what we always came down yeah. to was how important it is to find someone who can respect how much time you might have to dedicate to, you know, improving in your art career, especially if this is something you want to do professionally. Because, you know, we, we have days where like, of, of course, there might be days where both of us are really busy, you know, yeah. then no problem. But there might be times where one of us is way more busy and stressed out than the other one so in that case it's quite important to have that understanding and that respect for each other's time knowing yeah. that you know knowing that i know christina has to spend a lot of time on this project and you know i need to give her space and be respectful of mm. that and there are days like where we don't like talk a lot until mm. like the end of the day where we kind of meet up and watch netflix or whatever but yeah. like yeah it is important to kind of even if it's like a non-artist partner or a partner who is an artist like for them to just have the understanding that going into a career of art and creation like it's just very time consuming it's just mm -hmm. like a thing that kind of consumes your entire life like yeah. whether you like it or not because if you want to get good at a craft like a creative craft it will take a lot of time. Yeah. And if you have someone who's making you feel guilty or kind of giving you shit for spending that much time on it, like that can create a lot of friction. So. Yeah, that's gonna be quite difficult. Yeah. So I think it's best to just kind of, you know, have your cards on the table at the beginning, you know, hope that they are understanding yeah. of it. We're quite lucky in that, like we're both workaholics and we mm. both understand that, like we really just enjoy working in general. Yeah. So yeah. That helps. Find a workaholic partner. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. Uh, how to live and make money with Blender. So let's see, I'm learning Blender. I want to live with job that I love with modeling in Blender. I guess besides getting like a typical 3D modeling job, you know, mm -hmm. like if freelance or working in house, obviously you can be a 3D modeler, like a maybe VFX artist, animator, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but I guess besides those more conventional ways of making a living, you can think about selling um, assets like on 3D um, yeah. storefronts like Sketchfab or Unreal or Unity storefronts. Yeah, like a lot of the models we make for our channel, I just put that up on like Sketchfab mm -hmm. and sometimes they sell, sometimes they don't. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you dedicate more time to do just that. The beautiful thing with 3D is like you can reuse them. So like if you create one type of asset, that is applicable to a lot of things like people can obviously use that to kit bash and yeah. so on so if you just create a large library it's it's good money <laughs> and yeah like think about people who create add-ons and stuff for programs like blender yeah like they you know they obviously have a passion for 3d but they also 
understand some of the coding, some of the yeah, software think... development side of it, so they can bring these yeah. two interests together and create these add-ons and sell them to the community. Yeah, you can create like libraries of mm -hmm. like uh, like simply cloth. Like you have that library of like clothing, and then you have clothes in motion that has literally like a library of like uh, cloth, shoes, watches, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's really valuable. Like if you can create yeah. something like that, that's yeah. Or making tutorials, or yeah. you know, there's like I mean, like I was saying, besides the those more conventional ways of mm -hmm. um, making, like turning this into a career, um, a job. There are all these other extra ways of making money as well. As long as you yeah. have the drive and if you like get good at it, you know, if you spend time mm. to improve on the craft of it, then yeah, like you can definitely find a way. By the way, I didn't read your name because I do not know how to Tetsch pronounce that. Much. Like yeah, I don't want to like butcher not, it. Don't even try. <laughs> I think I already did. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, anyway, next one. Uh, Mine. <laughs> Any plans to make your awesome channel more popular? No, you have to read the name. Uh, oh, it's number three and a colon. It, That's a colon, right? It looks like Cthulhu. <laughs> That's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, any plans to make your awesome channel more popular? Um, I, we don't really have plans to make ourselves more popular. <laughs> like, I don't really care if we become popular or not. Yeah. I don't think we are going to be very popular because what we are doing is kind of niche. It's not yeah. like very, uh, like very. If you were doing something more, even more basic, like it was just focusing on drawing fundamentals, you know, yeah, that maybe we would have a bigger audience. But what we are doing is kind of niche, so I don't think a lot yeah. of people will be interested. But it's kind of like what we're interested in. Yeah, like... I don't care if we are popular or not. I don't yeah. really care about that. You know, as long as, like, we keep getting better at what we do, yeah. and, you know, we, our channel has been growing yeah. fairly consistently. And as long and... as we're still helping yeah. people, like if we're doing that then i'm happy like yeah. whatever size our channel is but obviously like the bigger we are the more people will reach but sure but there's always going to be like a limit to it you know depending on what we are doing you know like certain topics are going to be way more popular than others obviously yeah like no matter what you do like you probably noticed we don't really clickbait a lot and we don't have these like shocking yeah thumbnails we are not going to do any like, like just... clickbaity yeah really vague you know topics that are just going to catch attention but not going to provide any substance really like yeah. i don't have any interest in creating stuff like that yeah me neither so yeah but thank you for enjoying our channel nonetheless yeah. <laughs> make sure to subscribe and share <laughs> shut up <laughs> why is that with Blender? dennis c nolasco <laughs> i'm sorry asks <laughs> So why use Daz with Blender at all and just do a character scene in Daz? Same goes for the other way. Why not just use Blender for the whole scene? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can use Daz for everything if you want. I used to do that before I actually discovered Blender and was having a horrible time because it's so difficult to work in. Like, in Daz, you mean? Yeah, in Daz. Mm -hmm. Like, fair enough. It's very easy to like pose characters, but when you want to bring in lighting, and other assets, rendering and everything. I just found that to be so complicated. Mm. So you think Blender is easier to use and more intuitive? Yes, definitely. Um, but obviously in Blender, you don't have the tools like that. It's like there are some few add-ons, but they're very slow and they're not like quite optimal so that's why i just like using daz for like that specific reason like what it was meant to actually be used for yeah. which is posing characters and then just moving over to blender once i'm done with that part and just doing the rest there because it's just so much easier and it's very intuitive and i get better renders and it's much easier to kind of see things in real time because that's the thing with daz you can't mm -hmm. really render things in real time correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think you have like cycles or anything like eevee where you can kind of adjust a light and see it actually like reflect in hmm. real time or, like over an object or whatever that makes sense so you look you just use the best of from all these like you know different yeah softwares if, if it means i have of to trying like, to stick to one for no reason if it means i have to like jump between a few softwares to get the best result that's fine like as long as i'm getting good results you know mm -hmm. Like, hopefully, like, ideally, I would want to do everything in Blender, but sometimes just using other software is just easier and yeah. quicker, so why not? Yeah, I mean, there's no need to, like, you know, try to stay loyal to one thing, like, for no reason. If you yeah. can do it easily in this other software, just jump in there, get it done, export it to the, you know, 
to the next thing. Can I? No? Yes, okay. you may. <laughs> Wolfroot asks, Will you keep on making tutorials on how to form stuff with Blender? And when will you upload the video on how to make 3D look like 2D? Okay, is that me questioning it again? Uh, I think mostly, yeah. <laughs> Um, so by forming stuff in Blender, I assume you mean like modeling and sculpting. Um, obviously we'll keep making those videos, but right now we kind of put things on hold because that's usually more reserved for like concept creation type of stuff. Yeah, um, and also I think maybe they want to know if you are going to make more videos specifically focused on modeling and sculpting in Blender. Probably, eventually, yeah. yeah. It's just like we have so many ideas and we have so many mm. things we want to make. So it's just like um, trying to get like have enough time to make all of this um, because obviously some of that type of like modeling and sculpting is very time consuming and some weeks I just do not have time for that. So uh, when I have a bit more time in the future, I'm going to try to create a few more videos like that. Um, as for how to make 3D look like 2D. Look. Pulling a render out of Blender that looks 2D. Oh! I think that's what they mean. Like stylized. Yeah, I think they mm. mean you create a scene in Blender and when you render it out, it comes out like look looking like it's made in 2D. Okay, yeah. Um, I don't know if you've like checked out some of the Blender videos kind of talking about like shaders that have that kind of like tune feeling or like stylized feeling like Studio mm. Ghibli or like the borderlands thing with the outlines and everything like there are a lot of tutorials like that out there um we probably will make some eventually yeah like, that I would be very cool we had some ideas like things but the thing is we don't really want to cover ground that's already been covered yeah too much like if there are videos and you know a lot of tutorials on a topic that's already out there hmm. we try not to do the same thing and even if we are going to do something very similar we try to come up with a way where we can bring our own little twist yeah it's like into that it. storyboard we mm -hmm. made the animated storyboard where we kind of brought in one of those like ink shaders and kind yeah. of use that for the entire scene and then we kind of like Omar John added in his characters like hand-drawn characters and we mm -hmm. kind of animated it so it kind of had this cool noir style look to it um but yeah like we will probably we'll probably look into this like I had some ideas actually playing around with this I guess the short answer is soon probably Hopefully. question mark <laughs> oh additional question another one from yeah Wolfroot. Which one is more simple in the comics industry? Create one 3D design that you can rotate and adjust to your perspective or draw in 2D over and over again? Yeah, um, basically, obviously, to save time, you might want to create something in 3D if you know you're going to draw that thing in your comic over and over again. Like you create like a house or a room and you know your story is going to take place uh, in this environment. So, you know, you can create it in 3D, so you have it there ready, and whenever you are setting your scenes in it, you can use that as a reference, you know, in the background, and then you can just quickly draw over it to speed up the process. Obviously, that doesn't mean you shouldn't learn how to draw things in 2D, like, and you shouldn't learn about perspective. My standing on these issues is that you should use 3D tools as a way to speed up your process and not as a way to cover up your lack of knowledge because that can get you into trouble. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I don't mean like someone's going to come into your house and like, you know, the, the art police is going to kick down the door and get you into trouble. <laughs> but what I mean is if you don't really understand how to turn something in your mind and how to visualize it from different angles and draw it in different perspectives, if you can't quite understand the fundamentals of that, even if you are using 3D, you will make mistakes at like it will show off because you will be just relying on the 3d without actually understanding what you're doing mm -hmm. and i see this happen when people use 3d models when they use especially 3d figures i can tell when someone draws over a 3d figure but mm -hmm. they don't quite understand how gesture and anatomy works because they just pose the figure and they draw it but because they don't quite have that mm. fundamental understanding, the drawing doesn't look right. It looks off. And the thing is, like, when you're a beginner artist, to you, it doesn't look wrong. But to a more experienced eye who's, like, yeah. been doing it a lot longer, they can pick that up yeah. right away. It really shows. So, yeah. ideally, I would say, learn drawing. If it, especially if you want to get into comics, which is what I'm guessing from uh, your question here. Mm -hmm. I think you should learn 
the fundamentals of 2D drawing when it comes to perspective, when it comes to um, being able to see a simple form from different angles and, yeah. you know, just figure out how it looks and all that stuff. But always, of, of course, use 3D if you want to speed up your process. Like, it's a tool that's there to help you yeah. out. Um, but don't be relying on it too much. And the thing is, like, if you develop your 2D skills, that will help your 3D skills. And if you develop your 3D skills, it will help your mm -hmm. 2D skills. So it's all about, like, just becoming... I always believe that being a more well-rounded artist yeah. is always, like, a better way to go than just, like, 100% relying on this one thing. I think it's good to kind of be flexible in both ways. Um, mm -hmm. It really helps. Like, it really... Like, you might learn something in 3D that you can then apply in the 2D stage, or vice versa, that you would have never done hadn't you, like, explored that. So, yeah, yeah I think it's important to kind of explore different things. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I think you should answer this one. Why is Christina... Who's asking? Sorry, Tina Muna Production asks, Why is Christina's voice so infectious? Is there anything special that she puts in her food every morning? I'm like, I'm all red now. Crack. Um, <laughs> crack. <laughs> she puts lots of crack in her breakfast. Honestly, we've been getting so many comments of like people talking about my voice and it being mm -hmm. very soothing and relaxing and they just like the way I explain things and it's so odd to me because like until I made a YouTube channel no one had ever commented on my voice or said anything about it so I just find it so strange but I mean mm -hmm. also I'm a girl talking about blunder which isn't as common <laughs> I don't know if that's like a, a pull uh, I don't know like maybe <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Polycosm ASMR channel coming yeah, soon. Yeah, exactly. You guys are so weird. <laughs> and Akromul Hakim is asking, any plans to create short animation someday? Maybe short animated film for a festival? Um, yeah, not maybe like a full-on animation animation, but like we mentioned before, the animated storyboard mm -hmm. to be made. I would love to make something along those lines, just yeah. something a bit more, um, just a tiny bit longer, maybe like 8-10 minutes long, with a better, like, more fleshed out story, spending more time on the visuals, you know, and maybe getting a few different people to come in and voice act, get, yeah. like, more sound, like, do better sound design. Because that was just, like, a quick experiment, mm -hmm. basically, to see if it worked. And, and it, it did. did. Yeah. And it did work. Like, and I would love to... Well, yeah. Yeah, I would love to take that to the next stage and make something, make, like, a proper story out of it. Mm. But, we like, a proper full-on animation? I don't know. I don't think so. Because Probably not. That's not really our, you know, we, we are not really skilled in animation. Yeah. And it and doesn't mean that we can't learn. It is so time consuming, and the style yeah. we've been like animating in isn't really suitable for anything like yeah. very long length. <laughs> so. Not anytime soon. Like, I don't see that yeah. happening anytime soon. Because it is very time consuming mm. stuff, and I have other ideas that I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've also been thinking about because, like, with our channel, we eventually want to branch out into like game design and stuff like that. Mm. So, we've thought about like cutscenes, maybe like potential cutscenes, exploring different styles. So, not maybe. doing that black and white stylized look. Yeah, definitely like more, I guess, quote unquote, animated storytelling, yeah. but maybe not like a very traditional like a full on production yeah, <laughs> animation. Yeah, so Nishant, Nixant, sorry again, um, has asked us uh, lots of questions, which I think we've covered. Some of well. it. So he asked us about my dope haircut. <laughs> Is this a dope haircut? I feel like it's become very lazy. The people like, have spoken, they are saying it's dope. During lockdown, it's just become very lazy, <laughs> really. Um, but the reason I got it was because like I used to train a lot and I just got sick of like having long hair and I just like went crazy one day and I <laughs> went to a, a barber shop and they shaved my head and I quite liked it. So yeah, that's pretty much the story. <laughs> So, yeah, and he also asked about the origin of polycosm. We kind of did talk about that, yeah. I guess. Um, but it's basically, it was, yeah, about a year ago. Just longer than a year ago yeah. now, Christina came up with the idea. Um, we talked about working together. I don't think like we yeah. had the specific idea of a YouTube channel. And then I basically pitched to you the idea of like polycosm and like how we could kind of combine. Mixing 2D and 3D. Yeah, because like what we'd been doing is we'd been 
like just working separately so he mm -hmm. was doing his freelance work i was doing my freelance work and we just like never ever worked together yeah. so i just saw it as like a fun opportunity to like do something together to kind of combine both of our skill sets and just see what we come up with and also like i've always been very into like education and kind of like teaching people whatever i can learn and stuff like that so i thought like creating a youtube channel where we just like use it as an excuse to kind of experiment a lot just mm -hmm. try lots of new things that we haven't before see what kind of cool shit we can make and also so i basically pitched the idea to omar mm -hmm. he was a bit skeptical at first but no, i mean i was just like <laughs> yeah we can give it a shot i guess yeah. i didn't think you know i honestly didn't think people would care about it it has led to like opening some doors for us which has been really cool yeah. um so yeah um yeah like we got more uh videos that we are going to create create for clip studio that are going to come out soon and we got some new concept creation projects yeah and paid tutorials we basically want to start talking about like how to create like interior design mm -hmm. uh, exterior design Don't spoil like, it. environment design kind of stuff because we haven't touched on that too mm -hmm. much on our channel we also got some like weird one-off experimental ideas because yeah, we have um, a green screen yeah. and maybe doing some traditional media stuff maybe yeah, that's like one random idea that I had where I might take things into a more traditional like drawing and sculpting sense and make something with that. We'll see. It's just an idea that I'm still playing around with in my head. Yeah. Um, I mean, let, let us know if you guys will be interested in like content that's relating to more like you know, sculpting with clay or something mm. like that and drawing with traditional mediums like ink and pencil. Yeah, because I really believe that whatever you can learn from traditional media can really be transferred into like mm -hmm. more digital media. So yeah. if you learn a lot about inking, for example, you can definitely use that for like digital artwork, like where you do a lot of line work and stuff like that. So I, I really yeah. feel like it goes hand in hand together. So yeah. so yeah, we got all those new exciting, cool ideas coming out pretty mm -hmm. soon, hopefully. Hopefully. So yeah. I think it's going to be a busy year for us. Very. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be, which is a good thing. I'm really yeah. fucking thankful for that. Yeah. Callum asks if he's watching. Hi, Callum. Hi. Callum Johnston asks, when is Omar John next parkour sampler? Um, well, when you come to Glasgow and train with me, buddy, that's when. <laughs> Should you maybe provide them some context? <laughs> oh, uh, no. <laughs> I used to train parkour a lot and mm -hmm. Callum is one of my training buddies from back in the day mm -hmm. and he's still doing it. Um, he's like, check his stuff out. He's a really talented guy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Callum, just give me a shot when you're in Glasgow and want to train, man. That'll be great. <laughs> all right. That's pretty much Is that it? Yeah, that's pretty much oh all the questions. Oh my God, we went through all of them. Yeah. So hopefully we managed to answer most of your questions. Obviously, if you have more. I mean, if you just... missed them somehow, just let us know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we we'll, we'll might make another Q&A in the future. Oh, yeah. Once we gather a lot, like, enough questions. But yeah, that's all from us. Yeah, if you want any more, like, answers, like, if we didn't fully answer your questions, just, like, post them below and we can, like, elaborate yeah. or whatever. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks again for yeah. everything, for your questions, for your support. Yeah. Um, and we'll see you soon. This is fun. Bye. Bye. <laughs>